LCTV Sports presents Madomic Valley High School Basketball. Special thanks to tonight's game sponsors. Bangor Savings Bank has been investing in local communities since 1852. Supporting our neighbors continues to be one of our core values. Bangor Savings, where you matter more. Midcoast Athletic Center, Route 1 in Warren is your multi-use center for basketball training, tumbling, karate, open gym, tanning, and much more. Midcoast Athletic Center. RZR Ace Hardware, Route 1 Atlantic Highway in Waldeboro. Whether you need hardware, lumber, or feeds, RZR Ace is the place. RZR Ace Hardware in Waldeboro. Shelley's Flowers on Route 1 in Walderboro, your floral headquarters in Midcoast, Maine. From prom flowers to tuxedos, Shelley's Flowers has it all. Beautiful flowers, exceptional service, and daily deliveries. Lincoln's Country Store, Route 90 in Warren, has it all, featuring fresh meats, produce, groceries, and all your shopping needs. Conveniently located on Route 90 in Warren, shop Lincoln's. It only makes sense. Madomic Veterinary Services, Atlantic Highway, Route 1 in Waldeboro. Professional, compassionate care since 1988, where animals are their life and livelihood. Maple Lane Builders, 84 Maple Lane in Jefferson. For renovations, additions, new construction, or any construction need, look no further than the pros at Maple Lane Builders in Jefferson. First National Bank in Damariscotta is a one-of-a-kind experience. Their banking products are designed to serve your financial needs. At First National Bank of Damariscotta, we believe in you. France Furniture and Bedding on Route 90 in Warren has been serving the Midcoast since 2005. For fine, traditional, and contemporary furniture with a coastal flair, it's France Furniture in Warren. Love your home. All of our sponsors wish the best of luck and a successful season for the student athletes of Madomic Valley. Go Panthers! Hello everyone out there in Pantherland. LCTV Sports is bringing you the Madomic Valley Panthers as they take on the Windjammers of Camden Hills as the Jammers come sailing into the Panther Dome with a five and three record in fifth place in class A North. The Panthers were gonna respond with a 9-3 record in fifth place in Class B South. Larry Seidling along with Maya Zero. Maya, we are going to have a classic coastal clash here tonight. Larry, I literally <clears throat> could not be more excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a good one. We, yes. saw, we saw a couple of pretty good preliminary games. Uh, the Panthers are on top so far. The freshmen come away with about a 12-point win. The JVs really come up with about a 30-point spread over a team from from Camden that really is a lot better than what the scoreboard showed. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> they just had one of those nights when nothing happened. And <laughs> it's a team full of sophomores, too. So, so they'll be back. They will be back, and things will fall for them. In any case, any of you folks are wondering what the deal is with pink uniforms, it's cancer night here at the uh, Panther Dome, Panther Paws. They're selling uh, all kinds of stuff to raise money for cancer awareness. And uh, we have to be, I wish I'd known about it because I do have a pink shirt, Maya. What? I, I do. I don't. I am like solely black, white, and gray these days. <laughs> so also for the folks at home, while the Panthers are wearing pink uniforms, Camden Hills will be wearing the white uniforms. It's going to be a confusing evening all around. Well, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's always this intense rivalry when these two teams get together. You know, it's Camden, Oceanside, and Madomic. All three of them, always competitive. Uh, we're gonna have the Oceanside boys in here, uh, girls in here, in a, in a week or so, sometime. I Come right yeah, out, I'm not sure to, when it is. They need to reschedule it, because it do. was supposed to be on Saturday, but then they had to cancel it was. both games. And last year, Camden came to the Panther Dome and won that little Knox Lincoln Waldo championship that we had. They wound up beating the Panthers three times, which is very difficult to do oh, yeah. against any team especially across town rival right like the uh, Camden Hills and uh, Madonna and Panthers uh, long long standing rivalry yeah you were giving me some of the history oh, during yeah. the JV game and oh yeah Gary yeah I, I, for some of you folks at home I know you're listening Gary healed at Dyer that <laughs> big big rivalries 
You know, Camden won a state championship. Madame was knocking on the door just before they had their run of five or six in a row there. Western Maine and states uh, to late 70s and early 80s. Mr. Lash, I know you're listening at home. If you're not here at the gym, I don't see you. Uh, you were around there in 81, led that great Madomic 81 team undefeated, and they got upset in the tournament. But uh, just this this place, you look at the banners over there on the wall, there's a lot of history and, and a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun, 93, so we got six games left. Six games left. This is uh, our 13th game of the year. and uh, It's crazy how quickly it's gone. Has it? Yeah. I think I'm at about 45 okay, games so well, far. <laughs> this week alone. This week this alone. Is, this is my third tonight, Maya. Ugh. So I got two tomorrow night and two on Friday. See, so. I love my gig. I just swoop in for the varsity game. You just keep starting that car and bringing those sneakers. <laughs> yeah. Your job security right there. Excellent. That's all I. That's all I need. Folks, we've got a little competition here going on. Not a competition. We need your help out there. In YouTube land, uh, if you would go to a subscribe button, if you go to your subscribe button on your web page, click that and subscribe to our YouTube channel on LCTV. Uh, we are on the cusp of getting some free stuff from YouTube oh. and maybe able to monetize our channel. We have enough video hours, but we don't have enough subscribers. We need a thousand subscribers. And we've got just under 400 right now. Ah, uh, you can easily do that. Well, I think so. My staff has challenged me to, to uh, bring the crowd out. So between here and Lincoln Academy, hopefully LCTV can I pick up another. I think there needs to be some like added incentive, though, too. I mean, yeah, like the station gets some free stuff. But I mean, would you be willing to dye your hair or something? <laughs> That's what my dad did to raise money for vacation Bible school. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's even crazier than I am, I guess. Uh, <laughs> sure he's out. Uh, <laughs> no, don't think I'm going to, you know, my, I've got much hair anyway, so we, we'll leave it the color it is. I did dye it one time for uh, Halloween. Oh. I played oh. Elvis. I had an Elvis oh, Elvis, very so nice. That was kind of fun. Very so. nice. So the Panthers warming up, both teams on the floor, taking a few shots. Three and a half minutes left to go here. Our buddies from the radio station, Don Shield, Terry Spear. I don't, I can't even remember what the call numbers are for the radio station. They're on there. But we know you're going to enjoy here the LCTV sports team, Larry Seidling, along with Maya Zewart from the Lincoln County News. Maya, what's good in the paper this week? Oh man, we got some stuff up ahead. Uh, I can tell you that yours truly has a great article about the new owners of the Wooden Screen Door Company. Uh huh. That'll be in this week's paper. Yeah. Cool beans. Yeah. And L LCTV has a bunch of new shows. Uh, yeah. We had a lot of programming going on. Uh, Mid Coast Matters, a great show that we uh, did up there. I love Mid Coast Conservancy. Up there at Hidden Nature. Uh, we've Hidden got Valley. Hidden Valley, I mean, excuse yeah. me. And. Uh, Next week, uh, no, this week also, we are going to have the Citizens Advisory Committee show. Yes, that's, we got a press release about that. That's I'm right. Uh, Todd Brackett has is, is put together a team of, of citizens to help with policy and advisory and all kinds of things. And kudos to him for putting that together. Transparency. Too, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, so. We encourage you, anybody interested out there in, in looking at that over, read that article, read the press release, uh, and then the show is going to be on 8 o'clock Thursday night, and then again Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, Sunday night at 8 o'clock, and then various times check the LCTV schedule. Uh, I had a chance to sit down with Todd and Chai Corbett, the pastor at uh, Congregational Church, and uh, it just, it was a great interview, and it good. just had a lot of fun. Good, good, good. See, I respect that you do interviews on camera, because let me tell you, some of the best parts of my job are recording the interview, going home and transcribing it, and being like, wow, I sound like an idiot. <laughs> so, you know, I really hope the people at home are enjoying this, because I'm very much thinking before I speak. And we've got one coming out next week, oh. which is sta COVID, Staffing with COVID. Oh. And that is put on by the YMCA. We had uh, Casey Clark Kelly, executive director. We had... Cindy Wade, the president of Lincoln Health. We had Jeff Burrows, the headmaster at Lincoln Academy, and Mr. Todd Brackett. And each one of them, they all are struggling with staffing and re retention mm -hmm. and uh, recruiting and all just different. They all had the same problems, but 
came at it from a different perspective. Really, really interesting. We did that interview say, today. and That's and, a rock star uh, panel. You that was. Right that Dang. was just so much fun, Maya. Well, I will, I will be sure to tune in. Yeah, that will be next week, so check your LCN for that next week. We're uh -huh. just about ready to kick it off here at the Panther Dome. Windjam is sailing into the Panther Dome here with a 5-3 record in fifth place in Class A North. Panthers with a 9-3 in, in fifth place in Class B North. And Maya, who are you waving at? I am waving at the great John Duke, who is the former Newcastle town manager. Uh, he's over in Rockport now, but, you know, we're still friendly. And so uh, I actually consulted with him to make sure I'm going to get some of the pronunciations correct for Camden. So The Duke. Well, if the Duke says it, it must be right. <laughs> All right, we're going to have the national anthem here in just a minute and 11 seconds. This presentation of Madame Valley Basketball brought to you by LCTV Sports. And if you get into any of our sponsors, please say hello. Please say thank you for helping support these broadcasts. This week is designated by Bay Basketball Officials and Global Whistle on Cancer Week. Although you can't see them, our officials are wearing a pink whistle rather than the standard black whistle. The pink whistles represent the cause of fighting cancer. Cancer touches many of us, and our officials are promoting the need for all of us to continue to raise funds for this very worthy cause. This week, all the costs made, officials are donating part of their game fee. Would you also please consider making a donation for the fight against cancer? Enjoy the game. Good evening and welcome to the Dominic Valley High School for tonight's KPAC matchup and Pawns Clickars game between the visiting Windjammers of Camden Hills Regional High School and your Dominic Valley Panthers. The Windjammers of Camden Valley High School Conference are committed to the promotion of good sportsmanship. We ask that everyone in attendance tonight with the same. Not being able to bear the cause intentionally from the athletes. We encourage everyone here tonight to cheer loudly and positively for your team. Represent your community and school well. To honor America and all veterans, would you please rise? The gentlemen are requested to remove their hats for the play of the national.
So we've heard from stat lineups for the Windjammers. Now for your Madame Valley Panthers. Let's hear from A.D. Matt Lack. Hutchins, number 20. Jake Bickboy, number 24. 6 8 senior, Jake Craig. 5 10 senior, Patrick McKinney. And a 6 foot senior, Trevor Brown. A thousand point score, had 30 in the last game. I don't see anybody sitting down here tonight. So this, of course, tradition here at Madomic is they're gonna stand until the Panthers score the first basket. I'm trying to mark starters for you really quick and I am missing Garrett Hutchins. There we go. There you go. Bam. All right, Larry. Are you ready? I'm not sure, are you? <laughs> I'm always ready. <laughs> One of us has to be One of us has to be ready, that's right. So Madama's got a little bit of a height advantage here. Not much, but a little bit. They've done a good job the last couple of games getting that ball into Craig down low. So and there's Brown quickly with a layup right off the tap. Within five seconds. Trevor's starting out where he left off the other night. That's Moranica. He dropped 30 on him. That was in three quarters. In three he quarters. was out in the fourth. Doesn't go. O'Neal up top. Got it by Hutchin. Over to Norton. Wow. Norton with the three. Got the three ball to go. Brown said no foul. Oh, this is gonna be a game. Three, two early stages here, first quarter. Windjam is with the lead. O'Neal, got it by McKinney, starts to drive, doesn't go. Craig gets a hand on it. Good block. Hutchins gets it up quickly. Bickmore with a three. He's got it. He like that three ball. Something tells me the student section is going to play a big part in the home court atmosphere tonight. And there's Brown with a rebound. Can't get it to fall. <clears throat> it goes off of Madonna. Clifford. Turn doesn't go. Bickmore with the rebound. Ooh, almost had a foot on the line there. Out to Patrick. Patrick with the drive in the lane. Gets it stripped. That was Hunter Norton. He's picked up all of Camden's points so far. We got a 5-5 ball game here. McKinney in the lane. Stops, doesn't go. Trevor fouled. Hmm. <clears throat> Way outside. 
DeWard tracks it down. Doesn't go. Bickmore rebounds. And... Oh, we got a technical. Yeah. Yeah. That was... That was not that was... smart. And the technical's gonna go against Clifford. So McKinney will go to the line, see if he can pick up a couple of freebies. Officials getting a hold of this one real early. Yep. As Patrick gets the first. He's got them both. So there's two and the Panthers will get the basketball. down in front of us here. Treble will put him in play. And Jaden Starr is in the ball game. There was a lot that just happened there. There was. Jaden Starr came off the bench the other night with a big ball game. Two threes. Patrick got hit. There's a scramble for it. Many people on the floor. And it's going to be Panther basketball. Forty-four is in the ball game. Dylan Morgan Stern. My apologies. McKinney, way outside. To star. McKinney with a three ball. Got it. I think they only call that a two. Interesting, okay. As Patrick strips him, Trevor gets stripped. Back we come the other way. Officials have got their hands full keeping uh, this one under control. And something is... Scoreboard's not right. Scoreboard is not right. Scoreboard's not, they've missed a Panther basketball. That they've... last one was from... Uh, the yeah. score is very, and they've added points to the wind jammers. Yeah, they've, they've got a, they pushed, they gave the the last basket that Patrick got, they gave to Camden. Ah. And I think they're over there straightening it out right now. What have you got it? I've got nine to five. That's what I've had too. Excellent. Well, he was in the nine to 10. I don't, was Patrick's a three or a two? They, they gave him two. They, they didn't signal a three, so. Well, that, they, they've given him. They've their, given him the three. They, they've given him the three, okay. All right. They got it right now. Good to see the officials on that one. I Like I said, we like that three ball. <laughs> Norton's at the line. I don't know, Norton at the line. Doesn't go, Sky. Skies for the rebound. As McKinney got bumped. That's, that was Weston DeWard picking up two. Dickmore lines up a three, gets hit. Whoa! Jaden Starr with a fearless save, though. And yeah, just like that, we're all knotted up again. And Coach Patsy, he wants a timeout. He's not very happy that last turn of events. He was up 10-5, and just like that, let her run, run off five straight. Larry. We may have a ball game. We've got a ball game. <laughs> we have got a ball game. Ten ten, a little over halfway through this first quarter. Larry Seidling along with Maya Zewert. LCTV Sports bringing you this high school clash 
between the Madonna Valley Panthers and the Camden Windjammers as Jake Bickmore put the ball in play. That was close. Patrick wants to clear it out. Got a bit more, bit more baseline, and he gets hit. Count it. From the baseline jumper, Jake Bickmore doing a great job. Didn't Palm Lee in the game for the Panthers? As he gives Craig a breather. And Jake. Just like that. Gets the three the old fashioned way. And I think we're going to have an offensive. You are correct. As DeWard came barreling in there. And Camden's going to stay with that full court zone press. Bickmore's going to get a rest. It's Blake Morrison in the ball game. McKinney over to Parmley. Parmley wants a drive. Doesn't like it. Back to Starr. Big block by Aiden O'Connell. Patrick did well not to draw the foul that time. He did. Liam O'Neill with the points. And just like that, the Panthers are running the floor well. 15-12. O'Neill out top, looking to set his offense. He's got Norton down low with a turnaround. And no one's going to draw the foul. I think that one against Trevor. That would be his second. We'll see if Coach DePassi stays with Mr. Brown. He does not. He needs that firepower a little later in the game here. So Jake Bickmore coming back in who's having a pretty good game. He must have five or six points already. He has got six. A three, a two, and a one. Norton gets them both. Morrison. The guy the get across. Stow will bring it across. <laughs> And we're going to have a block. We may be in the bonus before the end Boy. of the first <laughs> quarter. <laughs> McKinney, far sideline. Patrick looking things over. To Morrison, to Starr. Bickmore starts a drive in the lane. And he gets hit. Couple times. I don't think anything's going to be easy tonight unless you get a breakaway. <laughs> uh. Neither team given an inch. 15 14. Panther basketball. Way out top to Bickmore. To McKinney. All right, Morrison comes up with it. Out to Bickmore. To McKinney. McKinney, foul line. He has it knocked away, gets it back. Patrick with a long three. Bingo! Wow. That brought this place alive. 
Yes, because the pulse was so dead earlier. <laughs> Doesn't go. And McKinney with a rebound. Patrick doing a nice job off that defensive glass. Patrick's just having a good game so far. Well, they, they, that big three, that senior leadership that we've talked about all year, they have to all play well tonight and get some contributions from Big Jake Craig down low. Thirteen seconds left in this one. Panthers looking for one. Bickmore. Oh, I thought he had the three. Stop, oh. pop, doesn't go. Not back. Bickmore with a light runner at the buzzer, doesn't go. So at the end of one, wow, what a <laughs> first quarter. 2014, a Panthers up. Wow, and the score from over in Camden, 17-15, Camden after one. So close games all around. Folks, like you said once before, earlier tonight, if you have enjoyed these games, we sure could use a donation to keep this uh, LCTV sports thing going. So subscribe on the YouTube page. That's the one that's super important as well as uh, we get this thing up enough viewers and we can get a little change to keep the TV station running on that deal. So. Uh, <coughs> Your community access TV, bringing you these high school sports over to Lincoln Academy. You got a Lincoln score? I do not. I just have the Camden uh, Madamic okay. Girls okay. score. Okay. All right. See, I can only have sources in so many places, that. Larry. <laughs> Come on. So it's going to be Camden basketball right here down in front of us. Let's see who we got for starting line. Norton will here. put the ball in play for the Jammers. And Norton splits the defense. <laughs> Corey Donlin in the ball game now. Oh, nice job. Blake Morrison over the defender. Ah. They, they got Morrison on the grab. going to be wind jam of basketball under their own hoop. <laughs> oh, I, no foul there, I guess. Couple <laughs> of no fouls. 22. Big Jake over the eight, Caden. Jaden. Jaden got his mask stripped somewhere. Oh, that may go, it does. <laughs> Jake Bickmore is going to go to the line. For a second opportunity for a three-pointer the old-fashioned way. What a great give and go that was. He is having a brilliant game. Trevor Brown. Trevor Brown? Trevor Brown is in the game. Well, Trevor's playing with a couple of fouls. He's got two. And Jake nails it. The only. He gets the only one, but makes <laughs> a three-point play out of it. Back in the ball game, Ryan Clifford. He picked up a technical earlier, so he's got to play a little bit better under control. O'Neill Clifford. Nor 
Norton's had himself a ball game too. He has. 11 points so far. No, no call, they're letting him play. For this quarter maybe. Coach DePatsy can't believe that last one. <laughs> wow. Nice pass. As deflected, it's going to go off Camden. If and I have a voice left at the end of this game, it'll be a miracle. I agree. <laughs> Patrick McKinney in for Jaden Starr. <clears throat> so Corey Donald will put the ball in play. Jake Craig baseline, doesn't go. And they're gonna have Camden over the back, I think. No, nope, no foul. Nope, just, just putting it in bounds. Brown controlling the basketball in the lane. Stops, pops, doesn't go. And they're gonna have Craig over the back. Yeah, they are. So the wind jam is going to walk it up court. They find themselves down five halfway through this second quarter. And there's that man Norton again. He's feeling it. Doesn't go, but Camden controlling the rebound. And it's going to go off the wind jammers. So it'll be Panther basketball. Tim Pomley back in the ball game for Jake Craig. Damn. Brown to Bickmore, to McKinney. Back to Bickmore. Jake Craig in the press. Patrick with a three ball, got it! Those are big, those are huge right now. O'Neal down in the corner to Clifford. Got an air ball. Oh, oh, Brown lost that. He'd like to have that one back. Patrick with the block. That was a save. That wasn't a block. That was a save. Jayden. Patrick doing a nice job. Is that one just slipped between Trevor's fingers. You won't see that happen too many times. No. Jaden Starr in the ball game for Corey Donlin. Good rebound by Patrick. Patrick doing a nice job. He's having, he, a, he's I, having a nice game. Him and Big Boy having a nice game. Ooh. I want to know how many rebounds Patrick has had. Okay, we're going to have a timeout. And so we're halfway through the second quarter. Panthers up eight, 30-22. I want to make sure my score is right after. Like we said earlier, if you folks can uh, hit that subscribe button and you like subscribe, that will help us out a whole bunch with our partners at YouTube, bringing you these ball games. And don't forget the donate button if you like what you see. Well done. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> You're doing good. Oh. 
this new program. There's so many things we could be doing that I don't know how to do. It's probably just as well. <laughs> ah, give it time. You'll next, learn. Next, next year. It's always good to have goals for next year. That's right. And as always, we want to say thank you to our sponsors that make this happen. And if you're into any of the establishments and businesses, please say thank you for helping sponsor all of these high school games, the Lincoln Academy as the Bonham and the Bonham Valley games. We want to say uh, hi to some folks in Phoenix, and we want to say hello to folks in Boise, Idaho. And I know they're going to like that shot. Oh, if oh. it went, but they didn't go. And Patrick nearly got a, another steal. That was Clifford. number 30, nice, yeah. Nice turnaround. And just like that, here comes Camden. <clears throat> that was Aiden O'Connell with the putback. And, uh, yo, speaking of Phoenix, yes. uh, shout out to the Madomic Valley Cheerleaders. Cheerleaders, KVAC champs again. again. <laughs> yes. And good luck to them as they go to the Western Mains this, this coming weekend, I believe it is. Well, I'll tell you, I think I said it night of, the routine they did here last Tuesday. It, it was a winner. It was clean. It was one of their best, in my opinion. So, well deserved, as always. Congratulations, Coach Heather Simmons and Assistant Coach Rachel Kaur. And assistant, assistant coach Caden Core, who's yes. uh, watched those girls for a long time. So the Panthers, Jake Bickmore will put the ball in play. As Trevor in the open court. I think Coach Tapassi had him settle down, tell him you can pass out of that zone. Don't try to dribble out of it. There's Norton with a runner. He's going to get that one. He is having a great game. <clears throat> Ooh. Behind him, if he'd let him, he had a layup. <clears throat> well, DeWard. For it. Trevor's going to go to the line. <clears throat> this game is just going to go back and forth. It's going to have who's got the ball with the last tick on the clock is going to be the winner. We got a 34 30 ball game. 236 left to go here, second quarter. It's going to be a stressful game. Brown at the line, trying to seal the deal on a three point play. He does. Blake Morrison coming in for him. A little offense defense switch there. Uh, Coach DePassi. Corey Donlin also in the ball game. Keep finding myself watching instead of like, you know, talking about it. Clifford doing a nice job, offensive rebound. That's a foul on Jacob Craig. And 34 is going to the line, Aiden O'Connell. Gets the second. Nice play. Oh, doesn't go. Donlin lines up three. Oh, oh, in and out. Whoa. Whoa. 
and it's going to be off the wind jam, so it'll be pant the basketball. Twice it went in and it came right back out again. And score that one for Jaden Starr. I was not sure which way that call was going to go. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Well, when you own the house, when you own the house, you got to have the home cooking. And yeah, Jaden can't get it to fall. Too bad. He's a pretty good foul shooter too. It's the first uh, no, foul shot. Has it stripped Smith. away by McKinney. Donlin got it. Good ball movement. That one extra pass. And Norton has it. Blocked out of bounds. By Craig. You see what they're doing there? They're doubling Norton whenever he gets the basketball now. Wise, because he's got, you know, he must have 15 already. 13. Nah. Very close. If he gets two on this play, it's your fault, Larry. <laughs> well, he didn't get him, but somebody else did. Dylan Morgenstern. Kind of a wild one. I think Blake got through there and was a little surprised at how wide open he was. Patrick has it stolen away. Oh, good. I uh, should have taken the shot. Oh, and here we go. It only the counts Lord. two, folks. Jaden Starr with the offensive foul. Did not I catch that one. Missed something there. We've got 26 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Panthers up 39 35. It's going to be a wind jam of basketball. Vic Moore in for uh, Craig with 26 seconds left. <clears throat> And loose ball, scramble for it. Stack coming away with it. To McKinney. And McKinney gets hit. Oh, they got to call it for a travel. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. So. Interesting. Interesting. So much for the home cooking. Many people on their feet for that one. Patrick throws up a three from three-quarter court and hits it. If you talk about the place coming alive, holy tamole mama. Woo! That's a big-time three ball. I want to see that one again, well. like now. <laughs> Our Holy instant replay is, and, and I got it. I followed the ball. We got it. Whoa. Woza. Holy smokes. McKinney with one from three-quarter court. If you turn, on, turn it on your LCTV right now, you'll get it. <laughs> In a moment. So we're at halftime here at the Panther Dome. I have an update from the girls game if you want it. We do. 31-21 Madomic at the half. Panthers up 10 at the half, and they're up seven Woo! here at this half. And what a first half we've had. Holy smokes. That was that was absolutely insane. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, there was nobody sitting down after that last Woo! shot that Patrick threw off. And we're going to stay right here because we got some special halftime stuff going on. 
before we go to our sponsors. Got to get your 50-50 tickets out here for you folks at home. You're not going to get a chance of this one. You got some scores there, Maya? I am working on it, Paul. Uh... I've got a 9-2-7, and you're an instant winner here at the 50-50 draw. And I don't see anybody coming forward yet to claim the big winnings. So, few folks at home, what a barn burner we've had. Wow. A 42 35, Panthers up seven. And kind of fitting there that half three quarter court. Heave by Patrick McKinney, nothing but net. That was, as he rattled that one in. That was absolutely incredible. I with I, notes with a buzzer with in the air. The buzzer went off with the ball in the air. The only thing could have been if that would have won the ball game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got scores. It All took right. me a second. I apologize. All right, to start with the wind jammers, Liam O'Neill with two. Uh, Evan Fogondi, Fogondi, maybe, I apologize, two. Ryan Clifford with two. Dylan Morgenstern with two. Uh, Aiden O'Connell with six. Weston DeWard with eight. DeWard, excuse me, goodness. And Hunter Norton with 13. Over for the Panthers, we have Jacob Craig, Jaden Starr, Corey Donlin, Blake Morrison with two each. Jake Bickmore and Trevor Brown with nine each, and Patrick McKinney with 16. Yeah, four three-pointers, including the buzzer beater at the end. <laughs> From 50 feet away. From 50 feet away. <laughs> that thing, sniper shot. Like, you could not have landed that with better accuracy. And this one right here at the foul line. Oh, that was for the money from the first halftime giveaway here. So we're at the Panther Dome with the Panthers up. 42-35, which has been everything that was billed to be. That was. Both teams in fifth place in their respective divisions and the heel points. Both need this win. They're both, it's worth a lot of points uh, for <laughs> and, both of these clubs to move up. And they're both out for blood, let's and, face it. And, and, and they are. Let's take this And the boosters getting a little mentioned. So while they're doing that, why don't we pay some bills? Bangor Savings Bank has been investing in local communities since 1852. Supporting our neighbors continues to be one of our core values. Bangor Savings, where you matter more. Midcoast Athletic Center, Route 1 in Warren, is your multi-use center for basketball training, tumbling, karate, open gym, tanning, and much more. Midcoast Athletic Center. RZR Ace Hardware, Route 1 Atlantic Highway in Walderboro. Whether you need hardware, lumber, or feeds, RZR Ace is the place. RZR Ace Hardware in Walderboro. Shelley's Flowers on Route 1 in Walderboro, your floral headquarters in Midcoast, Maine. From prom flowers to tuxedos, Shelley's Flowers has it all. Beautiful flowers, exceptional service, and daily deliveries. Lincoln's Country Store, Route 90 in Warren, has it all, featuring fresh meats, produce, groceries, and all your shopping needs. Conveniently located on Route 90 in Warren, shop Lincoln's. It only makes sense. Madomic Veterinary Services, Atlantic Highway, Route 1 in Walderboro. Professional, compassionate care since 1988 where animals are their life and livelihood. Maple Lane Builders, 84 Maple Lane in Jefferson. For renovations, additions, new construction, or any construction need, look no further than the pros at Maple Lane Builders in Jefferson. First National Bank in Damariscotta is a one-of-a-kind experience. Their banking products are designed to serve your financial needs. At First National Bank of Damariscotta, 
we believe in you. France Furniture and Bedding on Route 90 in Warren has been serving the Midcoast since 2005. For fine, traditional, and contemporary furniture with a coastal flair, it's France Furniture in Warren. Love your home. All of our sponsors wish the best of luck and a successful season for the student athletes of Madomic Valley. Go Panthers! Okay, we're back here at the Panther Dome with our, if the second half <laughs> is anything like the first half, ain't nobody going home early tonight. No, Panthers no. up 42-35. Oh man, Larry, that has been an incredible first half. That was one of the best ones we've seen. And you said that after the Marana Cook game. I did, and, and I thought that was the best I'd seen the Panthers play. False. But a tribute to Coach Tapatsi, the boys have played, the team has played just better and better as yep. they've gone into the season. And for those of you who missed it, as we went into halftime, <laughs> Patrick McKenney, three quarters of the court open, with nailed a half, it. With a half a second. Half a second. We watched it back uh, in halftime, and it was, you could not have scripted that better <laughs> unless it was at the end of the game. So it's going to be Panther basketball to start this second half. And Jaden Starr in the ball game. Along with four seniors. To McKinney. Brown in the lane. Oh, doesn't go. Rebound Camden. And Kenny got him on the arm. Excuse me. All right. That is Patrick's first foul, which is shocking given how many uh, there were in the first half.
uh, Camden's going to come out and stay in that full course zone press. Now they're going to pick him up man to man here. McKinney in the lane, stops, pops. Gets Got it. it. He's at 18 on the night. Jaden Stow with a nice block. Norton got a block, but I think Craig might have got a piece of the body. Nope, I think they called it on Star. They did. All right. So Norton will go to the line. I still would like to see him get that ball down low to Craig a couple of times here and open that outside up for him. There's still a lot of game left for that there to happen. Is. Oh, wow. Like that? Like that. Like that? That's exactly <laughs> what I was talking about. Great assist from Brown. Big ball. McKinney with a three ball, doesn't go. Starr with a rebound, nearly had it on the follow. Like seeing Jaden come down with that, then go back up, he had plenty of time. Oh, I thought he was gonna get the bounce there. He didn't have anywhere to go. And Ooh. somebody's down on the Patrick's down on the ground. I think he just nailed his tailbone. He's up walking it off. That was a tricky one. He didn't have anywhere to come down, but. Three ball. Oh, it's closing up, Larry. Has a scramble for it. Camden comes away with it. Trying to hit Star back door, Ooh. throws it away. Here come the Jammers. Good play. Nice give and go. We got a four point game, Larry. Panthers up four, 46 42. Jaden Starr lines up a three, got it! Starr with a three ball. From the elbow. Ah, no. nice play, Ryan Clifford. Bickmore with a three, doesn't go. Rebound. And it's going to be Panther basketball as it goes off Camden. Stop. Push backwards. And I think that's going to go against O'Neill. His third, if it is. So Jaden Stow will take the ball out of bounds at the half court, far sideline.
McKinney looking to run the offense. Back to Bickmore. Bickmore, the drive in the lane. Has it knocked away. Still Stop knocked one. away. McKinney coming away with it. <clears throat> Brown. Wow. As he gets mugged underneath there. And he'll get a chance to go to the foul line. Panthers up five halfway through this third quarter. And the boys have picked right up where they left off in the first half. Nobody giving an inch. As Trevor got the first. Let's see, Quincy Messer in the game for the Windjammers and Blake Morrison in for the Panthers. Jaden Starr getting a well-deserved break. As Brown nails them both, big foul shots. That was the key over in Camden. The Panthers hit that foul shots in the second half. Norton with a three, doesn't go. Battle for it. Brown coming away with it. Wow, good control there. Foul line jumper, doesn't go. Camden rebound, here we go the other way. Just <laughs> like that, took, taken away and we're gonna have a whistle. Foul is on number 22, his third. And Finn Pomley in the ball game for Jake Craig. Pomley to Bickmore. Gets to McCaddy. And McKinney misses him, got him going the wrong direction. <laughs> and we're going to have a whistle as Norton, with a nice drive down the lane, Three twenty left to go here. Gets Third it. quarter, 51-47, Panthers with a four-point lead. And Norton with a big block. Wow. And Norton and Brown talking it over down there. You have to respect it. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think, I think uh, Trevor said, nice, nice job, nice block. You got me that time. <laughs> Way out top to Bickmore. Brown with a drive, and he loses the handle. And there's a scramble for it. Still scrambling. So many people just. And Camden comes away that time. Wow. Aiden O'Connell, I believe. And we're going to have a whistle. And it's going to go. It's going to go basket. Back to Camden. Coach DePassi really upset on the sidelines as Brown got mugged underneath there. And there was no call. The officials got to get hold of this game or it's going to get away from them. There's going to, something's going to happen here. It is going both ways. Neither team is giving an inch. <laughs> 51 48, 247 left, 51 49, excuse me, 247 left to go here, third quarter. Panthers up two, and it's been a humdinger <laughs> right from the get go. That is exactly how I would describe it, yes. Good gracious. How much Norton got? 20? Norton. 
two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. 16, those have been big points. They have been. He has been a dynamo for the windjammers. <laughs> Fans certainly getting their money's worth here tonight. Indeed. <laughs> So it's going to be Jamma basketball. Bickmore chases down there. And it goes off Camden, so McKinney to put the ball in play for the Panthers under their own hoop. Way up top to Brown. To Hutchins. To Bickmore. Bickmore looks. Starts a drive baseline. Pulls it back out. And Pomley gets tripped. So he'll get an opportunity from the charity strike. Come on, Finn, bend those knees, follow through, buddy. Does the third foul on Ryan Clifford. He, uh, he picked up a technical in the first quarter. Dewad back in. As Finn hits them both. I'm wondering if someone talked about the importance of foul shots during <laughs> practice. Jaden Starr in the ball game now. And McKinney, big rebound. Bickmore baseline drive. And Camden doing a great job hustling. Both teams doing a great job hustling. Camden came away with the better of that one. As Norton went into the bleachers after it. And we got a whistle. And I think it went against Norton. Pretty sure you're correct. <clears throat> so, Panthers will have the basketball. They got to go the length of the floor here. 120 left to go, third quarter. Panthers up four, 53 49. That was Hunter Norton's first foul of the game. He's had a big game. He has. Big more to star. Panthers. Has Brown from McKinney on a nice bounce pass from Jaden Starr to start that whole assist. Norton, he may have got away with the travel in the fair, but star. So many. Mm, wow. As Brown puts it back in on the rebound, it's fast and furious underneath there. Charge. It's going to go against Norton. <laughs> As Jake Bickmore picks up the offensive. This place is going to erupt. <laughs> it already, it already <laughs> has at halftime. <laughs> so here we go. 
14 seconds left. Panthers with the basketball. Nick Moore running the offense. Palmley lines up a three. Oh, doesn't go. That was a rattler in and out. So at the end of three, the Panthers enjoying a six-point lead, 57-51. Don't go away, folks. It. <laughs> Don't go away, folks, because this one is a long way from over. We got eight of the probably the most exciting minutes that we've seen so far this year uh, coming up. LCTV Sports more than happy to bring you this high school extravaganza as the Windjammers from Camden Hills has come to town and taken on a Madonna Valley Panthers. What do you got for us, Maya? I have a score from Camden, 40-30, end of three, Madomic. 40-30, so, end of three, Madomic. <laughs> so exciting games in both locations. Well, we've got a great week of basketball. You as, do. As the Lincoln boys picked up a win over Waterville last night. They're playing, there's a game over there tonight. I can't remember who they've got. Check their YouTube page out. Why don't you check that out, Maya? See I can. You can do that. <clears throat> You're the technical savvy one here. She really is, folks. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm checking in with people about scores. I'm sending parks and recreation <laughs> memes across the gym. Like. Good stuff. Yeah. It's going to be wind jam of basketball. Larry Seidlinger along with Maya Zewa at LCTV Sports bringing you this high school game. I think it's only Madomic tonight. No, oh, maybe. Uh, All right. We're here for the final quarter. Let's see what happens. Big three, and that cuts that lead in half. And it goes off the Jammers. So it will be Pant the ball under their own hoop. McKinney will put it in play. See if they run that lob. Nope, they don't. Parmalee looks. Scott Brown, top of the key. He hands it off to McKinney. Patrick backing it up. That's a drive to Brown in the lane. Doesn't get it to go. <laughs> he gets, oh, nice tap. Jaden Starr, holy cow. Starr just stuck his hand and he gave it a poke towards Brown and he was standing all alone, got a layup out of it. Norton got it by Brown. Camden showing good patience here. Finn picking up a foul. As Clifford took it to the hole and he picked up the foul off Palmley. Craig will come back in the ball game. So, big Jake Craig coming back in the ball game. As that one paid off, as Craig got the rebound. Here comes McKinney on the dribble. As Donlin hit the floor hard. And is still on the And ground. he's still on the ground. As this is getting a little nuts in here, folks. I think that's Donlin down on the floor. It is. It, is. it absolutely is. Well, we talked about it earlier. These officials don't get the hold, get the hold of this one. Somebody's going to get hurt. And.
Coach Patsy still pleading his case. Absolutely, as he should. Corey was on the ground for at least 10 seconds before either rep acknowledged it. They gave that foul to Jacob Craig, and uh, Ryan Clifford is on the line. So we got McKinney, Brown, Craig, Starr, and Bickmore. And Craig coming away with the rebound. You've got to give him a stat. You've got to give him a stat, Mr. Official. You've got to give him a stat. These guys have lost control of this one. That's too bad. Well, that's the way she goes. Norton, got it by Bickmore. Back to Clifford. That's going to be four on Craig. Yes, it is. And we are in the bonus, well within the bonus. And Clifford will be back at the line. As Brown to McKinney. McKinney to Palmley, back to style. Big boy, way outside. Let's get a good one, guys. Deep in the corner, starts to drive baseline. And he gets rejected, gets hit again, doesn't go. And Patrick coming away with it. They're going to call a jump ball. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, we talked about the student section. I think the parents section might erupt here. Well, Coach DePatsy wants to take a timeout, talk it over, settle his team down. He is really upset with the officiating. 56-59. Wow. Panthers up three. 519 to go here, fourth quarter. LCTV Sports bringing you this band burner here as we've got the Camden Hills Windjammers in town as they're fighting for a playoff berth along with the Madonna Valley Panthers, both teams in fifth place in their respective divisions. Got to find more, what more is there to say? <laughs> I don't know, Maya. <laughs> But as nobody's going home early tonight, that's for sure. No, this is this is going to go down to the bitter end, Larry. Kind of like some of those football games this weekend, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Look, as a Midwesterner, I'm happy to see any team from our neck of the woods do well. Well, I think you got a Super Bowl. Chiefs. I think you got a Super Bowl uh, candidate over there in the Chiefs. Yes, absolutely. But how can you go wrong? You got the Bengals or the Chiefs. One of the others, you're going to be a Midwest representative. You know what? We do good out there. I'm just saying. So it's going to be Panther basketball. Jaden Stowell put the ball in play. McKinney. With a three ball. Got it! What a game Patrick's having. Calm under 
under pressure, that one. Clifford, guided by Parmalee. Norton, he's had a big ball game. He has. Adds to he it. just backed him down, that one. I think Big Moore did it, did it right, though. He didn't commit the foul. Patrick in the lane. Oh. Doesn't go. Forced it a bit. And Star, the defensive wizard there. Pomley wants a three, doesn't go. Ill advised. Yeah, Sixty-two, sixty. Panthers up two. You got to play smart. Bickmore to the bank shot. Old Sam Jones bank shot there. I liked it. Three forty-five. Panthers up four, 64-60. Windjammers with the basketball. Norton, foul line, jumper, doesn't go. Rebound. Windjammers. Jaden Starr is doing work. He is, he is a wicked, board. he's a wicked ball hawk. I don't know what they call that, on, why they didn't call something on that with Starr. He got molly hopped out top there, and he's talking to the referee about it. They called that foul on Finn. Sure. Now here come the wind jammers. Got a chance to cut it to one. Oh my goodness. This could be a very stressful 322. And they do. Well, believe it or not, they called a foul. <laughs> you said it, Larry. More than you know. So Big Finn's gonna go to the line. Chance to stretch this lead a little bit. Check him back into the ball game for the Windjammers. Number 10, I believe that's Liam O'Neill. It is. Come on, Finn, now bend those knees, follow through like I've seen you shoot 100 of these or two over to the Max Sports Center there. Now we got some controversy going on with the officials. I think someone needs to be checked out by the athletic trainer. Come on, Finn. Bend those knees. Reach into that hoop. We need this. We need this one. He's got it. Just like that, we played about 45 and a half minutes and we haven't decided a thing here as we got a tie ball game. And McKinney has it stripped. And I don't know who they call that on. I don't either. I have, they called it on well, that'll be his fourth. And we are now in the double bonus. Yes. Uh, quick update 
from Camden. The girl, the Madonna girls came away with it, 44-39. Close one over there. <laughs> and that's the first lead of the night. That is. For the Jammers. Bickmore with a drive down the lane to Brown. He's got it. Nice feed from Jake Bickmore. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was about as obvious as it gets. And there's a makeup. Yep. I'm not and sure who it was. I believe it's on Ryan Clifford. So Finn Pomley will go to the line. That is Clifford's uh, fourth and the eighth for the team. And Finn's on the line. Got the first. Jaden Star. Jaden Star skies for that one. And Pomley gets hit again. Ryan Clifford. That's as he gets a nice hand from the stand, fan, hand from the fans. He had a big ball game. He did. Come on, Finn. Ball throw, buddy. This is really when you need the free throws. Second, and we're going to have a timeout. And I believe that Panthers are taking that one out. Yes. So there you see it, folks. 69, 68, 143 left to go in this ball game. Panthers up one, and it has been it's a humdinger. Been something. It has been a humdinger. It's everything that high school basketball is along the coast of Maine here, or anywhere in the state of Maine for that matter. I don't care if you want to go to the county, down in southern Maine, up in Washington County. Great high school basketball when you get matches like this. And ain't nobody going home, that's for <laughs> sure, Maya. And we have, I would say we're two thirds full here or better at the biggest crowd I've seen in the two years we've been doing this. Oh, absolutely. Well, to be fair, last year, it was like you and me in the gym. <laughs> it didn't count, didn't count. So we got a pressure cooker going for you, folks. I think that's it's the... going to be, let me set the stage for you. Panthers up one. It's going to be Windjammer basketball. <laughs> and Panthers going to pick them up half court. We got Stott, Bickmore, Brown, McKinney, and Pomley. Rebound McKinney. Up to Brown. And he gets hit. Number 12, Weston DeWard, his uh, fourth. Oh, 
Uh-oh. Gonna get the shooter's roll. Trevor makes the second. for the three, pulls it back out. And Tomley. Tomley gets a stop. Here comes McKinney. 30 seconds left in this one. We'll see if they put him at the line. And they are. <clears throat> We're gonna shine them britches up tonight there, girl. <laughs> Nobody's going home and there's a lot of squirming going on. There you see it, folks, on the clock. Patrick McKinney. He's got the first. Does it make the second? Norton lines up a three. He's got it. High ball game. Bickmore to McKinney. And McKinney gets hit. Six seconds left on the clock. This one ain't over, folks. It is not over. There's a lot of time left. Okay, Patrick, bend those knees, reach into the hoop, just like in practice, a million times. Got the first. We need them both. Definitely do. Bend those knees, reach into the hoop there, Patrick, just like in practice. And we're gonna have a timeout. Understandably. There you see the score. 6.7 seconds, 73, 71, Panthers up, both teams in the bonus. You know, I just want to say, Madomic's best offense is a McKinney at the foul <laughs> line. Just saying. Both yes. Patrick and Catherine. Plenty of time to go to the floor. They're a pretty good shooting, three-point shooting team. interesting the defensive strategy here coach to Patsy will go with and offensively what coach John Morrow will come with you don't want to foul him but you especially on a three-point play especially on a three-point play so they're gonna spread the floor oh my gosh this is gonna be a long seven seconds Called him for a travel. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> they called him for a travel. That's probably uh, a little bit uh, questionable, but we'll take it as the Panthers eke out a 73 71 win over a very, very determined game. Camden Hills Windjammer. What a ball game. Wow. Wow. Can you send it to sponsors <laughs> so I can like recover my breath? <laughs> we'll, take, we'll take a quick break. Maya's going to get some scores, and we'll be right back. Bangor Savings Bank, where you matter more. Midcoast Athletic Center, Route 1, Warren. RZR Ace Hardware, Route 1 in Warren. Ace is the place. 
Shelley's Flowers, beautiful flowers, exceptional service, and daily deliveries. Lincoln's Country Store. Shop Lincoln's. It only makes sense. Madomic Veterinary Services. Professional, compassionate care. Maple Lane Builders. For renovations, additions, or new construction. First National Bank of Damariscotta. We believe in you. France Furniture. Route 90 in Warren. Love your home. So for you folks at home, what a ball game oh we had at the Panthodome, God. man. As the Madonna Valley Panthers picked up a huge heel point win against the Crosstown uh, up the coast rivals, Camden Windjammers. That, what ball, you won't, you'll be hard pressed I to will need pull to off a better one. 73-71, the Panthers coming away with a win. And the hero of this one, Patrick McKinney. Holy shenanigans. With a, a half-quarter at the halftime and two free throws with 6.7 seconds left. Maya, you got some scores? I do. We're going to start over with the wind jammers, and I apologize if my math is off. Okay, uh, Evan Fagonde with two. We have uh, Dylan Morgenstern with two. We have Aiden O'Connell with 11. We have Ryan Clifford with 10. We have Hunter Norton with a 23. Great game for him. Yeah, big game. Uh, Western DeWard with 18 and Liam O'Neill with five. For the Panthers, we have Blake Morrison with two, Corey Donlin with two, uh, Jacob Craig with four, Jaden Starr with five, Finn Palmley with five. We have Jake Bickmore with 11. We have Trevor Brown with 20 and Patrick McKinney 24 points. Wow. That's how you do it, folks. <laughs> that senior leadership. And, and you know, Jaden Starr and Jake Bickmore were, played huge defensively in this game. Mm -hmm. J Jaden came off the bench, had a big three, but he just he just was all over the ball, ball hawking. McKinney, that great leadership there, and really showed it at the foul line to win this game. Yes, absolutely. I said it about five minutes ago. I will say it again. The <laughs> best <laughs> offense you can possibly have is a McKinney on the <laughs> At the free throw line. line. So, folks, for... This has been LCTV Sports for Maya Zewert from Link High News setting in here doing my scorekeeping help. I'm Larry Seidlinger. We hope you've enjoyed this ball game. We ask you to again once thank our sponsors. And you sure we've been treated folks at home to a real humdinger of a ball <laughs> game. We thank you for watching. Check us out. We'll be back here again in a couple of nights with some more high school basketball. That's it from the Madama Valley Panthers Dome. This has been a production of LCTV Sports. Thank you to all our sponsors and fans. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's game.